Studio 23. This is going to be our third week of Michigan Watercolor Series, and we're going to do our state flower this time, which is actually growing on a tree. And it's one of uh, the prettiest and most uh, wonderful trees to see first thing in the spring. So we are going to do the apple blossom. I need you to grab a couple of crayons. <clears throat> I need a yellow crayon, a red crayon, a black crayon, oops, and a green crayon. Some of my crayons are starting to get a little broken, but that's okay. Broken crayons still color, okay? Right, now that we've got our four colors, red, green, black, yellow, we're going to start our watercolors a cooking just like we did last week. We're going to fill up our puddles for the bright green. We're going to swap colors so we got to brush our brush our brush clean and dip again. I need some brown, light green, brown, and pink. Right. Once we've got our puddles on top of our watercolor cooking and our brush taking a nap over here on our paper towel, we're going to go back to our cramps. Okay. So we're going to start off with a nice big branch going down the middle of our paper and please remember we're going to take up as much space as we can. Right. And it's going to be just a, like a jagged line. It can be super wonky. All the way down your page. Nice and big. I want it almost to the tippy top and almost to the bottom and going across the center. All right. well, once we have our wiggly waggly line, we're going to make a couple more little wiggly waggly lines are coming right off of it. And that makes it look a little bit like a tree branch. Great. Next. We're going to take our yellow crayon and all throughout the inside of our branch, we're going to make little clusters. Clusters are like a group of small things. So right at the tippy top, I'm going to make a cluster of little yellow circles really close to each other in a little group. Okay. I don't know if you can see it super well. I'm going to zoom it all in for you in just a second. I'm going to make at least five clusters. all the way down, back and forth on each side of my branch. Let's see if I can get you a little closer. <laughs> wiggly, wiggly, wiggly. Okay. Here we go, those are our clusters, all the way down the branch. Okay. okay. Great. Okay. I'm gonna wait for you all to catch up. You can pause it if you'd like. Good. Now, we're going to take our red crayon, and now our apple blossoms aren't necessarily red, they're very pink or white, and they've got these bright yellow steeples on the inside, but we don't have a pink crayon, so we're going to have to make do and use our imaginations. We're going to use our red crayon, and around the outside of these clusters, we need to make five shapes for the petals, okay? So nice little loops, one, two, three, four, five, one, Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Little ovals, they do not have to be perfect. A fun fact about our brush is that it's already kind of petal shaped. So once we start stamping our color on there, they're definitely gonna even themselves out, I promise. Okay, so we've drawn our branch. We have our little bits of pollen in this inside of our flowers, and we have five petals, okay? Now, a fun fact about our apt blossoms is that they can't just grow an apple right out of this flower. They need another tree and a bee or a bird to come by and pollinate them. So we definitely need to make sure that we have our pollen on here so that all of our flowers can turn into apples in September. Okay, now we're gonna take our green crayon we got to draw ourselves some leaves. I want some nice long leaves coming out in between all the flowers, all the way down. 
go back and forth just like we did with our clusters. I have one on this side and this side and this side and this side. I did the same thing with my leaves all the way down my big branch. Great. Now that we've drawn all of our shapes, we're ready to start adding our color. And we're gonna start with our pink. So just like last week, we are going to make sure that our paint brushes are dry, not dripping, but we're painting with the puddle, okay? Dry, not dripping, painting with a puddle. And if you guys need to get a new paper towel and it's super soggy like mine is already, go ahead and get another paper towel. Make sure everybody's ready for this next step. Great. Now we're gonna take our brush and it's already kind of shaped like the flower petal, like I said. So all we're going to do, we're not going to fill in our shapes, we're gonna stamp it like we did for our leaves last week. And we just have to stamp it five times. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna try not to let it drip. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I definitely need more pink. It's getting a little too light. I can just go right back over where it was light. And we're gonna do it again for our last flowers. Great, easy peasy, stamped and even. Five little petals coming off of our flowers. Did you know that the apple blossom is also edible? Not just when it turns into an apple, you can eat the flowers. I guess they taste a little bit like honeysuckle, if you've ever tried honeysuckle, which is another edible flower. Uh, they smell very fragrant. Fra they smell very fragrant and they apparently taste a little bit like citrus. You can make them into tea or jelly. supposed to be good for your tummy and stress, which is always helpful. Okay, now that we've painted our delicious flowers, we're going to go in and we're going to fill in these leaves with the green. So we've washed our brushes, we've dried our brushes, and we've got our not dripping brush full of a puddle, right? Great. So we're going to fill in our leaves and just like when we, oops, I did drip. What a bummer. Just like when we did our flowers, we don't have to fill it in too much because our brushes should be shaped just like a leaf. Pretty close. I'm just going back through and trying to soak up some of this extra water so it doesn't drip on my painting too much. Yours should be fine as long as you leave it flat. Okay. So I've got my flowers, I've got my leaves. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna go through with the pink again with a dry brush, not dripping, dipped in our puddle. And we're gonna go through and we're just gonna add some dots inside and around all of our leaves and flowers because they don't all bloom at the same time. So it's really pretty to see the blooms and the buds. So we've got our buds, our blooms, our leaves, and our branch. Switch again back to our brown. Same way we've been doing it. I don't want a super drippy brush, but I want lots of puddle inside of our bristles. Okay, and we're gonna go right ahead and we're just gonna kind of trace the branch and we're gonna go around the flowers, wherever the branch is sticking through. You don't want to paint through the flower because then it's going to turn your flower brown. But we're going to fill in all those little bits and baubles of lines and squiggles that we made in the beginning that are sticking out on the other side of our brush of flowers. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I hope you've all caught up. If not, please go ahead and just pause the video here. Great, okay, so now I'm going to do our background and we're gonna go back to the wet, wet, wet watercolor that we used in our very first video. <clears throat> and I wanna make sure that my brush is super drippy wet. I'm gonna make sure by dipping it in the water and I'm gonna bring it right over to my puddle where my blue was already cooking. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more. And for this part, you can't have too much water at all. We might even add more after we drip, dip. 
All right, and we're going to fill in our background. Ooh, look at how drippy, that's exactly how drippy I want it. Maybe not all over your desks or anything, so try to keep your space nice and neat. Put your water cups next to your paint tray so that you don't drip over your painting or all over your desk, okay? We're gonna fill in around the flowers. Please notice I'm not getting too, too close because if I get the wet blue, too close to the wet green or too close to those little buds I just painted, then it's gonna mix in together and it's not gonna look like the shape we want it to. So we're giving a nice bit of space around our branch with this blue. And notice how dark, dark blue it is up here and how soft it is down here. Let's fix that by adding lots more water right to the page. And hopefully yours doesn't do all this drippy, drippy nonsense. Let me just add it right to the page and spread it all out and that blue will go so far, so far. Okay, and I'm gonna keep going. I've got just a little bit more up here on top. No, 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 oh no, drippy, 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 drippy. Too drippy for the upright painting. Nope. I've gone all the way around and here's a fun tip. I'm gonna grab a paper towel. And if you made it just a little bit too drippy, you can go right back in with your paper towel and you can soak some of it up with little dips and dabs and it's gonna make a little bit of texture in your paint. Makes it look almost like a cloud because we need some bright blue skies and some springtime. And this tree, it blooms from April until May. So it's one of the first trees you're gonna see blooming this spring. And after this last week, we definitely need some springtime. Okay, I've got most of my drips under control now. And we're gonna go ahead and, I have an apple tree outside of my window. So when I'm doing my dishes in the springtime, I get a beautiful view. It's this big cloudy looking tree, it just looks like, like a big, puff of cotton candy and when the wind blows all the little petals just kind of flutter all the way around and it's like beautiful absolutely beautiful and I think we really need to show that in our painting because it's one of the best parts of living by an apple blossom and we're gonna rinse 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 our brushes no color we're gonna drip it all over our paper towel we're gonna take another little puddle and look, I'm going back and forth like this. And I just wanna remind you that I want you to kind of keep them real close to each other so we don't make big, big messes. It's okay if I make a mess because I'm in a studio and I have every intention of cleaning up after myself. But if we want our desks and our areas to stay neat and clean and not get any drippy pink spots where we don't want our drippy pink spots, we gotta make sure that we're keeping our watercolors really close to our water cup. Okay. Now I've got my puddle and I've got my pink ready to go again. And I'm gonna go through my background and I'm just gonna make little dots. Mine are gonna be drippy dots. Yours probably won't be as drippy as mine because we're gonna keep our papers flat on the table until everything's all dried up, right? Great. So I've got my whole entire branch. I've got my blue all going all the way around but not touching any of my shapes. I've got my leaves. We've got our branch. We've got our buds. And we've got our flowers with five petals and our little pollen dots inside that do that cool glowy effect just like our stars did when we did our white pine. All right, that's it for our apple blossoms. We've done some really good work together. Now, I want you to take this painting and I want you to think of a family member or a friend who's very special to you and I want you to give them this painting because another wonderful thing about apple blossoms is that they signify love and abundance. So when we give them to our friends and families, it shows them that we care about them very deeply. Well, you can give them a painting, you can give them a little cluster right from the tree if it falls off and it smells so pretty and it should make our friends and family feel very loved. All right, 
We'll see you next time for our last video, okay? Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.